G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday afternoon here in Australia, so again, obviously sort of, you know, Tuesday evening sort of stateside, getting close to sort of Tuesday morning, and we can see the market cap is up just a little bit, 1.47 trillion, which is nice, not too bad, still under 1.5 trillion, which I really didn't think we were going to drop under, and we got very close to going under 1 trillion, so yeah, there you go. But, you know, 1.47 trillion, not too bad. Just some sort of small moves. Bitcoin dominance dropping, very, very interesting. Obviously, people are starting to jump back into the altcoins, getting fairly excited. People are starting to feel bullish. Hopefully, they're right. I mean, you know, I'm still bullish on crypto uh, in, you know, both kind of the sort of medium term and definitely to long term. But short term, it's hard to say, you know. Again, I like altcoins and I'm not saying don't buy them, but you just got to be careful. We could still see another big drop here and that'll really wreck a lot of these altcoins. But anyway, moving on. ETH, 16.9% and gas prices are at 11. So not too bad at all. all. Right, as we can see, look, it's green here at the moment. It is looking quite nice. But what we really need to focus on is here. Look, the price of Bitcoin, we're still really only back to where we were not that long ago. So we haven't broke any new all-time highs. Good thing is we haven't broken any you know all-time sort of lows in the last sort of month or so either so again still back to that just sort of ranging but obviously the market is looking a little bit excited at the moment all right last 24 hours top 100 what has pumped the most what's done the best Whoo, ethereum classic i heard they got a hard fork coming up so i wonder if that's got something to do with it but they've had a nice bounce bitcoin gold of all the random things to sort of come back but there you go uh bitcoin cash uh having a bit of a pump as well sort of 34 dollars there so yeah again some crazy things you know sort of jumping up out of nowhere quantum v chain very nice right having a nice move back still only eight cents so uh, that is you know Again, just about everything's on basically fire sale compared to where it used to be anyway. Terra Luna, likewise, making a nice comeback. You know, we can see some good gains there. Really, only kind of two kind of, you know, what we call really good gains, at least what I call anyway, really good gains. So, you know, nearly 20% for Bitcoin Gold and 30% for Ethereum Classic. But we do need to remember the general market is only up sort of 1%. So, right, let's have a look. What about losses? Has anything not fared so well in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Well, there we go. Bitcoin SV. So, <laughs> Craig Wright winning uh, his little, you know, court case. Obviously, it didn't help him none. Uh, the price is still down a little bit. But in saying that, we can't take it all away from him. Uh, they are up 24% over the last seven days. Kasama, a bit of a pullback. Theta Fuel and Theta itself. So there you go. And then, you know, it's all really sort of, you know, single digit losses. So nothing too major. Uh, yeah, generally not too bad at all. And again, you know, you know, still a couple of small losses here. But over the last seven days, they are generally up. But look, you know, if you could look at the last month of, you know, most of these altcoins, they're up and down and up and down and up and down, but generally sort of going down. But it does have that feel at the moment like hopefully the market has found a bottom. Let's go have a look at the chart. All right, what's the Bitcoin chart telling us? Because that's the one that will, will really tell us the most. Again, still stuck between this range. We haven't broken 42,000 and we haven't broken 28,000. We're just still ranging about uh, in this sort of area. But what we can see is that we are on a downward trend. We've had a fake out, fell back down. Another fake out, fell back down. Is this going to be another fake out or is this legitimately a breakout? That really is, you know, as they say, you know, kind of the million dollar question. You know, where does Bitcoin go from here? Yeah, again, I've been saying for a while, I think we're just going to chop around sideways for a while. Whether this is, you know, truly a Wyckoff, you know, accumulation phase, uh, it's really hard to know. And I just get the feeling that, you know, whenever you think you've got Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency markets pegged, it goes and does something that you're not ready for. So again, I'm not saying that it is coming, but I am worried that we might still have one more leg down. And look, it could go below this $28,000 mark. And really, if it does go below 28000 I would expect it to get somewhere down to, you know, 24000 maybe sort of even 20000 thereabouts. Not saying it will. 
just saying that if it breaks down below this, like legitimate closes below it, that's really where I'd see the next line of support. And maybe that is the spring for this, you know, Wyckoff accumulation phase, if that's actually what we're in. I mean, they already showed this is kind of textbook Wyckoff uh, dissemination, you know, passing it out to everybody else. Whether this is Wyckoff accumulation, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But again, I'm just happy to buy these prices, you know, Bitcoin, because if it goes down to 20,000 or 10,000 or whatever, I don't care. I just keep looking at this is where it's going to go to next once it finally finds its bottom, wherever that may be. So whenever I'm buying it under that price, I'm looking at some kind of gain. And again, we're at 35,000, you know, not quite, but you're almost going to double your money buying Bitcoin here when it gets back to its old, old, old time high, let alone if it goes lower. And again, I've said that before. All right, let's move on. This was interesting. So 64 cryptocurrency firms have withdrawn applications to operate in the UK, the FCA says. So obviously there's, you know, a lot of really bullish stuff kind of happening, but there's also, you know, these regulations are starting to sort of scare companies off. And, you know, that was always going to come. We can't have this, you know, the new financial industry, as they say, becoming the new financial industry without it just being a lot safer than what it is. And that is part and parcel of it. So here it says, a growing number of crypto firms in the UK are withdrawing their applications to register with the Financial uh, Conduct Authority or the FCA. Around 64 firms have already withdrawn their applications and will not be able to operate in the UK. Now, so far, only six firms have successfully registered with the FCA. The publication are conveyed, adding that dozens more companies are being assessed, but they are not yet deemed fit and proper. So obviously their regulation's pretty tough. Now, is it too tough? I guess it's hard to know. A lot of the crypto you know, players, they didn't have any regulation that they had to follow. So it was all very easy to set up a crypto site, you know, some kind of exchange or something like that and start selling it and trading and all the rest of it. So now that it's becoming mainstream and the regulations are coming in, this doesn't necessarily say that it's too heavily regulated because six firms have managed to do it. And what I would say is it just means that they are probably you know, the more high-end kind of firms, whereas the other ones were, I don't want to say backyard kind of jobs, but they were obviously just looking for the quick money and they were never really going to put too much effort into, you know, getting registered and all the rest of it. And also a number of them probably have been doing shady stuff and they don't want to get caught and found out. That would be my guess. But I can see this becoming kind of more of the norm, you know, over the next few years and worldwide. It'll be the same. You won't have all these backyard run you know, Mount Gox kind of thing. So they just, they won't make it. They're going to have to be, you know, properly operated. Yeah, following all the, you know, the laws of the states and countries that they're in. And they're going to have to have big teams behind them, you know, lawyers and all sorts of stuff. Whereas again, I think most of these ones that were probably looking at, you know, applying for licenses, had a look at it and went, oh God, that's too hard. We weren't ready for that. And so they will just kind of, you know, fade into the distance as they say that's my guess i don't uh, that's not based on anything i just get the feeling considering there were so many of them they're going oh yeah we'll get a license and then they're all just dropping like flies and only six have got through but maybe it is just that hard who knows but i do see this becoming yeah part and parcel of this uh space going forwards all right, Senator Cynthia Loomis backs crypto for US retirement plans. She wants to see crypto assets become a normal part of the diversified asset allocations in US citizens' retirement plans. Uh, couldn't agree more with her. I think, you know, this space is finally getting to the point where, you know, it is becoming legitimized and those gains can't be scoffed at. Now, the problem is they are still super volatile and they're going to remain super volatile for a while. So we're not going to see, you know, massive amount, like massive amounts, you know, considering, you know, on the dollar terms, yes, we'll be invested. But percentage wise from, you know, hedge funds and, you know, retirement things and all the rest of it, they're not going to dump, you know, basically 50% of all their cash into crypto. That's not going to happen. They're going to put in small amounts 
until the space grows again is more regulated and it's not as volatile as what it used to be because yeah it'd be pretty hard if you're in you know had your money in some you know i think you call it 401ks over in the states and i don't know what they are in other places around the world we call it superannuation here in australia but imagine you put your money into your superannuation and you come back in a couple you know a couple of weeks time and your superannuation's down you know 50 60 percent that just couldn't sort of be tolerated by Again, what we call super here and 401ks over in the States, retirement funds and plans. So they won't be dumping tons of money into it. I would say likely in the future that will change, but we're probably still yeah, a decade, maybe even two decades uh, away from that kind of real mainstream where basically literally every man and his dog's doing it. I, I've flip-flopped and thought, you know, oh no, maybe it's coming a lot sooner, but I just don't think it is. I think we really are still a long way away. You know, 2% of the population are into crypto. The other 98% are still, yeah, quite some uh, time away from all of, you know, from making it here and joining the rest of us. Hence why I think the upside is so much. But I definitely think they should have allocated, you know, some kind of percentage towards crypto. That way, you know, when the big dumps come, it doesn't hurt them so much. But when the big pumps come, they'll probably do really well. All right. So we talked about El Salvador and they were making legal t uh, Bitcoin legal currency. Seems Paraguay isn't going to do the same. So Congress Congressman Carlos Rajala, hopefully I said that right, has said Bitcoin... Uh, sorry, has big Bitcoin plans for Paraguay, but legal tender status isn't in the cards for the South American nation. Very, very interesting. I'd say some of this probably has to do with uh, the IMF and you know some of the things that they've probably done, uh, not done, but you know things that are happening to El Salvador and some of these other small nations have gone, oh no, we still need help from the IMF, you know, and all the rest of it. So they haven't gone for legal uh, tender just yet. But he still has really, really big plans for Bitcoin. And I'd say they're going to be very, very Bitcoin friendly. But legal tender, it won't be. At least not, you know, in the short term. All right. So coin market cap taps Uniswap for Ethereum based token swaps. So you're actually going to be able to use Uniswap through coin market cap. That's very, very interesting. So through an integration through an integration with the centralized exchange Uniswap, visitors can connect their crypto wallet and buy or sell any ERC20 token they please, just like on Uniswap itself. Well, it's going to be a link to Uniswap, so it will be Uniswap basically. Now, launched in 2018, Uniswap accounts for 65% of the trading volume on decentralized exchanges. And they are exchanges that are maintained by their community, not a corporation. So that's why people like Uniswap. No specific sort of person owns it. They are decentralized. Now, are there whales that own, you know, like good chunks of it? Absolutely. But there isn't just one person who's kind of, you know, in control of it and things like that. And that's why I just, I can't see Uniswap going anywhere. As long as they continue to, you know, innovate, I think it's going to be hard for them to, you know, be knocked off the mantle when they have over 50% of, you know, all the trades going on. So again, there's a ton of DEXs out there and Uniswap has 65% of it. That, you know, means 35% of, you know, the, the rest of uh, the trading volume is mixed up between all of those. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Sushi Swap would probably take up a good part of that. And then you're looking at things like Quick Swap and all that kind of stuff. But Uniswap really does have a massive hold over it. And, you know, these layer two solution things get going, Optimism and Arbitrum and things like that. Not a lot holding Uniswap back, except for they're Ethereum based only. They really need to become, um, you know, have bridges to some of these other ones. But in saying that, the other ones are going to make a bridge for them. And when there's a bridge going one way, then there's a bridge going another way as well. So something we'll have to keep a lookout for. Now, here's the kicker though. Despite the convenience of the integration, coin market cap users must still pay transaction fees on Uniswap. And here's the problem is that they hit over $200 per transaction a few months ago. But again, with Arbitrum and Optimism and things like that, hopefully you know fingers crossed that all comes soon and then you won't have to worry about that stuff and then really there'll be nothing holding uniswap back other than it's only er20 uh, erc20 compatible that is something that uniswap needs to sort of work on bridges to other chains and things like that all right this is very very interesting 
So USDC stablecoin could soon expand to 10 more blockchains. Look out Tether. So it'd be the broadest expansion of the $25 billion stablecoin to date. So that's how many billions of dollars are in USDC. Potentially surpassing the eight blockchains that support Tether's USDT, the market leader with a $63 billion market cap. So they've said, we anticipate that in the coming months, USDC will be available on Avalanche, Celo, Flow, Hedera, Carver, Nervos, Polkadot, Stax, Tezos, and Tron. So seems like USDC is making a really big play to become the big dog. And in all fairness, this is the one that I back, you know. I hope and I pray that USDT, you know, has done the right things and should there ever be a really big audit and they get, you know, raked over the coals properly, not just a bit of a squeeze into their business, that they actually do have the assets to back it all up because if they don't, I think that's really going to hurt the market. Uh, I think that will be the catalyst for a really big uh, dump if it turns out they haven't. I mean, if it turns out they have, I think that will then legitify the market even more and then you know pump things even higher but unfortunately if it goes the other way whew, that would really really hurt hence why i like usdc they basically are sort of fully regulated very transparent all right last for all my australian sort of peeps so australia's financial watchdog says bitcoin etp could create risks and they're seeking feedback so similar to the sec over in the states they were seeking feedback on a uh, bitcoin etf uh, Australia is seeking feedback on our Bitcoin ETP. So the paper seeks feedback in two main areas on how an ETP may affect the market, including compliance costs, and here's the other one, and effects on competition. So again, traditional finance and things like that, what kind of you know uh, effect will it have on them? And look, the first part, completely agree with, you know, how much is it going to cost, you know, to make it compliant and all the rest of it? But, you know, obviously there's some traditional finance people. They're probably a little bit worried uh, about their market share being eaten up by this, you know, new player that's coming. But uh, I've said this on videos before, uh, and, and it's well document, documented out there. The financial system that we operate on now has been around for, you know, a hundred years there's been very little innovation. It's just the same old, you know, processes and old machinery that's always been used. Nothing has changed. There's been very little uh, innovation in the financial sector. So now that the new innovation is coming, the old part of it are really on the back foot at the moment. And yeah, again, this is why. It's just because they don't understand the space as well. But, you know, if the old competition can't keep up with the new competition, then guess what? The old competition's got to go. Outside of, you know, the new competition just not being legit and all the rest of it, which I think cryptocurrency is, you know, at least a number of them, not all of them, but definitely blockchain, excuse me. Blockchain, I believe, is 100% the future. And again, we need to foster this new tech that's coming through, i.e. the crypto space and make sure that it doesn't get over, overly regulated. We definitely need some regulation, but not overly regulated. And then we just hamstring, you know, any innovation uh, and, you know, new ways of doing things because that is what we need. The system that we have definitely doesn't work. And, you know, you hear the stories about people trying to send money to people overseas. And, you know, if you're only trying to send a couple of dollars, it'll probably cost you more in fees to send it. So that doesn't work we really need to have it set up that you know you can send money to anyone around the world and you know sure there's going to be some kind of fee i.e you know an ethereum 2.0 gas fee or something like that uh that sounds fair but yeah you know 50 bucks to have money sent around the world and sometimes it doesn't get there and it can take a week or two to get there ah, yeah that just doesn't work all right that's it for me not a whole lot going on like i said you know, I'd be careful with getting into the altcoins at the moment. I'm not saying don't. And look, I'm still dabbling in some altcoins here and there when I feel like I want to buy some. But I am. Yeah, you know, I've got it in the back of my mind that we could still see, you know, some further downside. And, you know, that's going to hurt purely in big term, Bitcoin, sorry, terms. But it's really going to hurt uh, those altcoins as well. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.